Hi, I'm Dave Frank with Subaru. Today we're going to show you spring tune-up on horizontal shaft engines. You want to make sure you disconnect the spark plug boot from the engine. Now we're going to show you how to actually change the oil on the engine. Uh, before I get started on that, however, I want to point out that now is a good time for you to pull out your owner's manual because every engine manufacturer requires a little different specification. With that being said, in Subaru's case, uh, we recommend that you use a 10W30 uh, for summer type applications. I have three different tools here. Uh, you can obviously use a regular wrench, uh, you can use a socket wrench, or in our case, uh, Subaru provides you with the tool to actually change your oil with every engine. Now that we've finished draining the engine's oil, we're going to go ahead and tighten it back up. And now we're going to add some oil. After you do your oil change, you want to make sure you check it one last time on the dipstick. What you want to do to check that is, you just take your dipstick, line it up, do not screw it in to the hole. Now remember, this is full. You want to make sure you line it up with the full hole. Now we're going to show you how to check your spark plug. Once again, this is another great time to pull out your owner's manual. Lots of great information in there to tell you gap size and other useful tips. We are now going to remove the spark plug boot. It just pulls right off. Please make sure your engine is cool. All right. As you can see, it has some composites on it. What you can either do at this point is A, replace it with the recommended spark plug, or B, you can clean this one off and reuse it. To clean a spark plug, all you need to do is get a wire brush. And now you want to read your owner's manual to look at the recommended gap size. So this one's ready to go. I always recommend if you get the spark plug started with your hands. Reason being is a lot less likely to cross thread. Now we put the spark plug boot back on, just clip right in there, and you just checked your spark plug. All right, moving on to the air cleaner. What we're going to be doing now is checking to see if our air cleaner is clean or if it needs to be replaced or if we need to clean it in the case of foam. What I have is three examples of dirty air cleaners here. Uh, the first one being an all foam air cleaner, which we'll show you here in a second how to clean that. The next one being a paper element air cleaner that definitely needs to be replaced. Uh, the last one is what we would call a dual element. What that means is foam on the outside, paper on the inside also needs to be replaced. All right, now we're going to demonstrate how to wash out a foam element air cleaner. We're going to set this pan in here to make sure we catch any of the oil from the air cleaner itself. Now we're just going to add a little bit of soap. Now everybody recommends uh, something a little bit different here. In our case, just plain soap is fine. I believe our manual does also say you can use kerosene.
All right, now we got that good and cleaned out. Now we're gonna show you how to put it back in the engine. You're also gonna wanna let this dry overnight. We got a nice clean air cleaner now. Now we're gonna add a little bit of engine oil or oil to it. We just wanna work that through the actual air cleaner itself. Okay, if you don't put any oil on it, you might as well not even have an air cleaner there because the oil is what's really gonna stop all the particles and stop them from harming your engine. Take any excess oil that you may have off. All right, now let's go ahead and put that air cleaner back in there. Now that we got the air cleaner back in there, we're gonna go ahead and put the cover back on. Start it with your fingers, just to make sure you don't strip anything. All right, if you watched winterizing your engine, you gotta remember to turn back on the fuel. Otherwise, you're gonna have a real rough time starting the engine. So, in this case, the fuel valve is very conveniently located. In some cases, it's actually on the engine. Uh, please look at your owner's manual to see where the fuel valve is. So we went ahead and we turned on the fuel valve. Now, the fuel doesn't just instantly get inside of the carburetor. Uh, we need to wait for the fuel to actually feed into it. So you, you probably want to wait a couple minutes before you just go ahead and start trying to start the engine. So hopefully you learned a lot about spring tune-up. Uh, please check out our website and our YouTube page to learn more about our engines.